We're doing something with Priyanka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid rags. It's Dave Tim Corbin. I'm Rick. And he calls it Instagram, Twitter, 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 Okay, that's what. Bang! You know what I just did? What? What is that? What is it? What is this? Really? I don't know what that is. I know what this is. It's from Friends. No, this is. No, it's... No, it's... It's it's not the arms, it's the... No, the, everything together. Isn't it the forearms and the... Pretty good. It was stuff. close enough for hand grenades, you should have known what I was doing. <sighs> um, but, uh, this is a speech from Priyanka Chopra. I don't think awesome. we've heard a speech. We hers. haven't yet. I don't think. I could be wrong. Well, unless you consider, I thought, I thought, true a speech. She does fa uh, really well. Uh... <laughs> Uh, but this is uh, Priyanka Chopra's speech. Looks like it came out in 2017, but it's uh, Variety is the channel that it's on. Uh, like Variety Magazine? Yeah. Great. Uh, full power of women speech. Rock and roll. Uh, we are not women, but we like them. Uh, and <laughs> we like powerful women. So we are we are qualified to yep. react. And we, were, <laughs> we came into the world through women. That's true. Yeah. Most of us did. Yeah. Not all of us. Test nope. two babies out there. That's true. Okay, but uh, here we go. You're not Priyanka. Oh. I was gonna say, that is not Priyanka. You're white. Uni UNICEF. UNICEF. UNICEF's a non-profit organization. Oh. Oh. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna just keep it here. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. This is Ava. She's 16 years old. Great on being 16. An age where girls should be enjoying their innocence and joys of their youth. But she, at such a tender age, understands the importance of being a voice for her peers, an advocate for young girls and women around the world who may not have the opportunities that us sitting over here have. So receiving this honor from a hero like her makes this so much more exceptional. So thank you. Good afternoon, Good and afternoon. thank you, and wow, I am so privileged and so honored to be sharing this afternoon with all of you and these incredibly amazing women that are being honored today. Down there. I'd like to extend my congratulations to each one of you, Octavia, Michelle, Kelly, Patty, and all 50 women Spencer, that have been Michelle included Williams? in the Impact Report. Or Obama. Your achievements not just inspire me, but also so many others to work harder, to be better, and to make a dent wherever we can. So I'm very, very proud to be standing alongside of you. So in life, you know, there are moments when you stop and ask yourself, how did I get here? Like, why am I standing here? Well, this is definitely one of those moments for me. And I find myself going back to the beginning, back to my roots. I was born to incredible parents amazing parents who served as doctors in the Indian Army. I was the firstborn, and as far back as I can remember, I made my parents very proud and happy 99% of the time. Okay, slight exaggerations of personal achievements are allowed from time to time, don't you think? <laughs> my brother was born a few years later, and even then, nothing changed for me. We were both given equal opportunities, and I want to emphasize this. I want to really emphasize this for you because I don't think a lot of people might understand that being equal might seem very normal. But where I come from, India, and a lot of developing countries around the world, more often than not, this is an exception. Mm. It's actually a privilege. My first experience of the glaring disparity between boys and girls came at a very, very young age. I grew up in a middle-class family with extremely philanthropic parents who constantly reminded me and my brother how lucky we were and how giving back to those who were less fortunate was not a choice. It was a way of life. Simple. I was seven or eight years old when um, my parents started taking me on these visits in a traveling clinic to developing communities around and villages around the city that we lived in called Bareilly. 
We were packed into this ambulance and would, my parents would provide free medical care to people who couldn't afford it. My job at the age of eight was assistant pharmacist. So I would count all the medicines, put them in an envelope and give it out to patients. And I really took my job very seriously, very seriously. But the more I went on these expeditions, the more I began to notice the simplest things that distinguished a boy from a girl or a man from a woman. For example, girls were pulled out of school when they hit puberty because they were considered ready for marriage and babies. That's 12 and 13 while boys still enjoyed their childhood. Our basic human rights, such as healthcare, were denied just because they were women. Let this, let's call this whole experience trigger number one for me. Fast forward a few years and many, many triggers in between, like a producer director, for example, early on in my career, I must have been about 18 or 19, telling me, that if I didn't agree to the ridiculous terms or painfully low salary in his movie, that he would just replace me. Because girls are replaceable in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. That was a memorable one. Made me decide to make myself irreplaceable. Mm. But I think what really moved the needle for me and ultimately led me to create the Priyanka Chopra Foundation for Health and Education and around the same time partner with UNICEF was an encounter with my housekeeper's daughter. About 12 years ago, I came home from set early one day and she was sitting in my library reading a book and she must have been eight or nine years old and I knew she loved reading. So I asked her, I was like, this is, I mean, it's a weekday, why aren't you in school? And she said, oh, I don't go to school anymore. So I went and asked her mother and I said, you know, why isn't she in school? And her mom said that her family couldn't afford to send her and her brothers to school, so they chose the boys. The reason, she would eventually get married and it would be a waste of money. I was completely room, blown oh. <laughs> and it shook me to my core. Eventually I decided to cover the cost of her education so that she could continue to learn because education is a basic human right. Mm -hmm. and a huge necessity, especially today. From that point on, I was determined to make a difference in as many children's lives as I could, in whatever big or small way that I could contribute. There's a really, really beautiful quote that I read recently, and I think it's absolutely appropriate to say, to ex explain what I'm trying to say today. The hand that rocks the cradle, the procreator, the mother of tomorrow, a woman shapes the destiny of civilization. Such is the tragic irony of fate that a beautiful creation such as a girl child is today one of the gravest concerns facing humanity. Girls have the power to change the world. It is a fact and yet today, girls are more likely than boys never to set foot in a classroom despite of all the efforts and progress made over the last two decades. More than, I'm just gonna give you a stat, more than 15 million girls of primary school age will never learn how to read or write compared to 10 million boys. Primary school, it's the beginning of our future. Over the last 11 years, I have witnessed firsthand the incredible work that UNICEF does for children around the world, especially victims and survivors of child marriage displacement, war, sexual violence. But there is still so much work to do. And for me, that is the fuel to my fire. The reason I'm so committed to this cause, and that is where my passion stems from, because I know that a girl's education not just empowers families, but communities and economies. A result of her education, we all do better. It's just as simple as that. As entertainers and influencers sitting in this room, I feel that it's our social responsibility to be a voice for the voiceless, which is why I applaud each and every woman in this room for being such a badass. <laughs> for using your platform and your voice to contribute to change and for ensuring 
that there is not even one lost generation as long as we are alive. I'd like to thank Variety and all of you for encouraging me and all of us in this room to keep going and fighting on. Thank you so much. She's a good speaker. Yes, she is. She's a very good speaker. Um, and makes me very happy to know now what I know about her. The fact that she started from mm -hmm. Miss World and mm -hmm. she's now you obviously using her celebrity to help people and especially like young girls who unfortunately do not have the access to the basic human right of education uh, because some people think that the brother deserves it because he's a guy, which makes absolutely zero sense um, <laughs> at all. Um, but or are yeah. treated differently when they go through puberty or are treated differently when they are on their period or are treated differently, you fill in the blank, yeah. because they're a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, have you, what have you noticed you having been a father of both a, a boy and a girl? Yes. What are the differences you've noticed how people... Oh my stars, how much time you got? Yeah, well, a couple minutes. The primary, <laughs> the primary one is the overt sexualization, sexualization of yeah. the being. Obviously, yeah. yeah. I mean, my, my son, who's an attractive man, mm -hmm. even when he was a young boy... It's pretty he, good. He, he, it's pretty good. Uh, when he was a teenage boy, mm -hmm. many people would say, wow, Mike is such a beautiful boy. Mm -hmm. But walking down the street, he didn't have women doing this when he walked by. Yeah. Whereas I had to let my daughters know when they were 12 and 13, mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to say, did you notice that? They're like, notice what? It's like, did you notice that? You need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Aware of what? That grown man mm -hmm. was sexualizing you. He was yeah. looking at you. No, dad, gross. No, honey. You, and experientially, they've said to me, mm -hmm. when I've asked them, how often have you had to deal with objectification? Every day. Probably. Mike is like, I don't ever have to deal with that. And the girls are like, every day. Yeah. Yeah. When a guy goes out, you don't have to think about your safety, usually. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, just, just objectification lustfully, yeah. then add to it the other level. Violence. Of yeah. that, that, that sense of, um, even, in a, even in a place as advanced and safe, as Los Angeles, mm -hmm. there is that constant awareness of if a man comes along, I'm weaker than the man, and mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah. Micah doesn't have to think about that. Yeah, but yeah, it's, I, I love that she has that organization to, yes. to help people like that, and that's one thing I've always wanted to be. Able, if you ever do have the means to start a charity that you really care about, it's um, obviously you should. Yeah, I think it's your responsibility if you have the means to do change using your your <laughs> gift of finance <laughs> yeah i've got several mm -hmm. that i am looking forward to being able to do yeah. one day and she absolutely carries herself with a stately regality and she's a very good public speaker not only her capacity with her i don't think she was reading anything i don't think she was either she may have had she kept glancing in yeah. this particular spot on the left didn't may she have was been. reading anything i don't think she was and she definitely doesn't well, need it like bullet points. Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't need it. She has a capacity with her vocal uh, range and what she says and her mastery of the language. She doesn't use any filler words. If you don't know what filler words, they're uh, and, the words and, um, <laughs> uh, so uh, those are filler words and people mm -hmm. who do that are typically uh, uncomfortable and insecure as well as her body language. She's tremendously, which is not a surprise. I mean, she was taught to be Miss World. Yeah. So she learned public speaking skills body language, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So she's she's just a really strong, confident woman. Yeah, great yeah. speech. Yep. Let us know what other speeches we should react to, whether Priyanka or, or others. Uh, we are always down for a good speech. Yep. Uh, so let us know what other ones we should react to down below. <laughs> Tuh, <laughs> <laughs>